Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and I'm actually doing a redo here of a video that I had previously posted but the audio on it for some reason got really muzzy and like backgroundy noise. I'm not sure what happened. I'm super technology challenged but I'm trying to redo it. So take two of my goat milk oats and honey quick and chatty version. Um, I remake this. I try to keep it in stock all the time and I apologize if anyone saw my previous video where the audio was completely, it was really hard to hear and I apologize. I probably should never have even uploaded that. But it sounded good on my end and yada yada. Again, my technology challenge. Thank you so much for putting up with me and my learning curve. So I'm going to get right into it. Here is the quick and chatty version of goat milk, oats, and honey. All right, we're getting right into it. And there is the farm fresh goat's milk. And I do a water discount from the live portion. Here's locally harvested raw honey that goes in there. All the good stuff. Um, colloidal oats. I put this in almost all my soap. In my goat milk, oats, and honey, I do a double portion of the colloidal oats. And here's my kale and clay. I just love how it makes the lather feel. So I'm going to blend these in and let them fully absorb and sort of smooth out and let it sit for a few minutes before we move on to the next step, which is the water discounted lye portion. Here it is. And I have put a half a teaspoon of titanium dioxide in there because the uh, oatmeal, milk and honey fragrance I use does discolor and I want this to be on the lighter side. So just getting that blended up to a nice trace, not a lot going on. We're not going to do any swirls. What you're going to see is a very strange color morph here on the um, batter. It's really interesting. I think with the honey sugars and the milk, look at that very strange orange color. But don't worry, it'll bounce back to a wonderful creamy beige. Um, I love uh, chemistry and science, and it's an interesting uh, reaction there with the lye and the oils and milks and things. But the color comes back, no worries. All right, I'm gonna mark off where my log splitter is gonna cut so that I can texture the top. And um, this is my stainless steel baby spoon that I love to do the swoopy top with. And it's just so satisfying. It's fun to do these tops. And I think aesthetically, they're really pretty on the finished bar. It's just something about that creamy texture. It's, it's satisfying, I think, to watch and to do it. So I'm very right-handed. I have to flip the mold <laughs> to do the swoops the other direction. I'm literally very dominantly right-handed. Here is my organic oats that I'm going to sprinkle on the top. Um, and, you know, they just come off the first time you use the soap, or you can bop them off. But I feel like they really go with the theme of the soap. It's such a plain and simple soap that I like the oats up there just to get the whole idea across. There it is. Now this is 24 hours later. I'm gonna get it out of the mold and this is a workshop heritage mold. It's a tall, triple skinny and I really, really like it. Um, these molds are very easy to work with, great company. So it unmolds like a dream. Again, there was sodium lactate in my lye solution so I love that. Unmolding is a breeze. Got some oats stuck on the side there, no big deal, but look at that gorgeous slab of soap. Something really nice about that. So again, the tall triple skinny and this log splitter is from Workshop Heritage. So I can get three loaves out of that one pour. Got a little discoloration rim around the side so you can see what it's going to cure out to be that lighter beige color. And the little brown speckles inside the soap are just from the colloidal oats and the honey. I think it's pretty. It just gives it a very earthy look. Um, it's not an exfoliating bar. Those colloidal oats are very fine grind, but um, it, yeah, so it's not it's not going to be exfoliating. I turned my loaf on the side so that uh, the oats on the top won't make drag marks down through the bar. So that is why it's on the side like that. And not a lot going on, just beautiful, simple soap. There's something really classic about that. And this fragrance is so wonderful. It's soft, mild, but it's there. Definitely smells like oatmeal, milk, and honey. And here is how I finish up my bars. This is a couple hours after I've cut. That's a KitchenAid vegetable peeler. And here is my stamp that I got from Digital to Create. 
Uh, I spray it with isopropyl alcohol, give it a whack with my mallet, and there you go, finished bar. So I like to do one in the front end just to show everybody the quick version, but here is what I normally do is bevel them all up first and then stamp them all in a row. It just makes it easier um, getting them all pre-beveled. And again, with my recipe and sodium lactate, I am able to do this the day after I pour. So I cut them, let them sit for a few hours to dry on the surface, and then I come through, bevel, and stamp on the same day. And that way I can get all my photography and you know all the other stuff done with the soap. So that is how I approach it. And my stamp is specifically made for soap um, from this fellow in Hungary, and he does a beautiful job. I'm very happy with it. Uh, and I have a link on most of my YouTube videos for stamps from him. So again, spray with the isopropyl alcohol, and that just helps it release from the soap bar without any sticky bits. That's just what works for me and the recipe that I'm using. And it makes a nice crisp impression of my logo. So I'm really you know happy with the whole setup and there is a finished bar all the goodness something about simple soap gotta love it thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day